Hello, Freddie. Oh, How are you? Surprise. Five yeah. Three, <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was this supposed to be a surprise at 530? Well, we're out well, surprise blown. Well, how come that was a, he got here early? When he, he walked came in here, here to get a, to get a sauna. Somebody, he I knew, Some, I knew it was a surprise. Oh, that's what he did. Yeah. Somebody from the club, in the, in the operation of the club, came up to him and said, Yeah, this is going to be great. Why, why do you need six quarts tonight? He said, I'm very much <laughs> <laughs> and then so they blew the surprise. I figured they'd be showing up at six. Yeah, Ellen, Ellen Miller blew it. And the employee handed him the invitation. Greetings. It's nice to see you again. <laughs> so, Jack, what did you do to try to keep him in the office today? Everything conceivable. Believe me. He's such a stubborn guy. We had everybody we knew called him. We tried to set up a partner's meeting. He'd have none of it. But he wouldn't tell us what he was doing. We knew he wanted to come out here for a sauna. Talk yeah, him out of it, Jack. We're, we're just <laughs> guests. That's our surprise. Well, this held up pretty good. I want to hear about it. Hi, I'm Myron How are you? Caught in the act. Who's here? The mic. He said, what are you doing here? Yeah. Thank you. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm here with Mo Sugarman, who's standing. Wait a minute. Do you have the list I have? Do you have the list I have? You're on court one, and you oh, have partner one. Now, you have to find out who partner one is. Your number is two, so now you got to find out who's number one. Uh, okay. Jack. You ought to be number one. You're the first yeah, You sure. Well, maybe you are. <laughs> sure. Maybe you are. We'll find out who's number one. Dr. Volk. Hi, Robert. How are you? How are you you going to play with me? I can't play. I've got to come back. I'm back. Does this, back. Back. Does this mean we're not playing? Byron! Does this mean we're not playing at 5.30? That's right. When you call the third time, I figured there's some kind of a setup, but I didn't know what or to what extent. Fishman? Here. What call is yours? I got here early because it took a while. What is this? Feinberg? He's pitching. I can't get a court because this guy points to me. He says, he's got six courts. So then I knew. I spoke to you yesterday. Yes, I heard. Good to see you. You know Herman? Hi, Herman. Good to see you. How are you? You notice Victor got the cab here on time this time? You don't see the whole minute of the wedding there. <laughs> and I'm, I'll be out in two seconds. Wait, I gotta say happy birthday to the birthday boy. Hi, hey, hey, how, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hey. How are you? Herman Levin. Be yeah, be to you. Hello, how are you? Come on. Oh, oh, yeah, there's a prize. A prize. When Bobby D said this, I won. Remember? Well, you don't remember. Yeah, I won. I grabbed a plate. So what happened? Are you No, I got it. Go give him a big donation. You're supposed to stop at Oakland. Your son's supposed to be here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to give him a little... Who's him lucky trouble. number 11? Oh, really? Yeah, big man. Uh, 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 is he going to be there? No, you stopped by and saw him. Hey, Herman, you know how to hold that thing? This. Yeah, I know how to hold oh, this. No, right. no, not the tennis racket. I've never learned it. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> I don't know how to work that. Eight. Four, two... Partner number seven. Four, five, number twenty. This is Cut this off, kid. Welcome to their party. My name's Emery, for those of you who uh aren't around here that much. Uh, we're going to play three three rounds today. I made it out to four, okay, but we're only going to do three today.
hold somebody else. Okay. Okay. Not until Ann Sale flips me the finger. Okay, now, it's not the alcohol. Drink Amstel Light. It's great. Uh -huh. No, fill it. Let's drink it right Let's fill it. You want a new commercial? Maybe under the table. Let me come out and say I'm thirsty. Good shot. Okay, you guys, you gotta sit down there. All right, I'll let's sit down. All right, okay, you said so. Movies and diamonds and jewels. It's gorgeous. I'm really, you're gonna take my picture, don't take it while I'm eating. This is a way to encourage you to sit down. Okay? All right, do you have any last things you'd like to say to... Uh, well, hi to the public out there. How about to uh, Mr. Manders? Uh, uh, Mr. Happy birthday, Mr. Manders. Many, many more. Another 65. Many more tennis matches, huh? Many more. Yeah, and get this club fixed up. So here. everybody's under control. Hey, Mike. Mike, the best thing about this evening, the best thing about so far, I've been able to see your two boys. They're great. I don't know here? how much you had to do with it, Are but they're here? great. I'll just keep rolling. Just keep going. No, you're <laughs> don't believe, stop. Believe me. That made the evening. <laughs> He's going to have another 65 years year old. How you doing? Good. How are you? I don't think I met you, did huh? I? Fred Weisman. How are you? Hi, Jared. How you doing? Jared. Yes, of course. Are you kidding? You're my client. Huh? <laughs> you're my client. You're the one who's on that crazy moped bike, weren't you? Myron. Just enjoy yourself. Get that shoulder fixed up and uh, have many happy returns. Thank you, sir. And are you too involved in yourself? I, I really, Sanford Simon, Marvin, what's his Ralph now? Right, right. And we really have no advice. And we really don't consult because we're retired. That's you right. charge we're money for that. Uh, I'm retired, so see your own doctor. Hi there, how you doing? We're doing fine. Did, we're enjoying ourselves. Did I yeah, fish? I think Louis Greenberg. Hi there. Hi. Do you need an excuse? I'm hungry. That's all. Looks good to me. Just don't eat it all. Sorry, Sorry, for me, you look like you're right. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Sidney South, and we've met. Okay. Didn't you work at National City Bank for a while? No. And that was, no, that was my brother. Yeah. Leland. Yeah. Yeah. you got to be careful not to confuse us. Right. Here he comes film, now. When you film people who are taking food off of the salad bar, they're less likely to take as much as they really want. So maybe you should take the camera off of them. That way. So that they're not so embarrassed. That way we'll have enough food to go around, won't we? <laughs> yeah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder, and I got a few things to say to architects. Not before dinner. After dinner. <laughs> I know. A young kid is wishing an older man a very happy 65th birthday, and uh, I hope that uh, the world treats me as well as it's treated him when I get to be his age. <laughs> you have anything to say to a 65 year old guy who. who uh, I can't, listen, this. I can't even remember when I was 65. That's how long ago it was. So for a young fella who's only 65, I have to tell you, he's got a lot to look forward to. Now, if you're putting this down on tape, that's your loss. Hi! What do you have to say to a 65-year-old? Uh, do you remember when you were 65? No, and I don't think that Myron looks 65. To me, he doesn't look a day over 64. 64 and a half. Yeah, that's just about that. Uh, to Mr. Myron. Myron Manders and I, Arnie Feinberg, go back a lot of years, and he has the, the uh, distinction of uh, being in Alabama at uh, Tuscaloosa, which was the 
this critical point in our life where we, we really uh, had the cutting edge of our development. That was, no, that was in uh, our uh, uh, beginning of uh, our Army career. I'm pretty sure he uh, know with, with because Jordan. Of that, because of that, that he never, ever would consider going camping with his family. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, considering the, the way he behaved down there, I can understand that. And you, you came all the way up from Bain, didn't you? Well, I got to tell you, I'm, that's at least I'm, a I'm very, drive. that's right. I'm very fortunate that my wife went to, to school with uh, uh, Mike's wife, and so I was included in this crowd. Uh, I've enjoyed my friendship with the Manders. Uh, we're very fortunate. We have Lee and Dayton now, so uh, uh, I'm not giving a lecture. I'm going to tell a dirty story in a few minutes. Well, I'm waiting. But, uh, Let's wait till you get the bill for this dinner. Okay. Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, I've been watching Mike Manders age beautifully. For we've lived here now for 20 years, and Mr. Mike Manders has been mellowing and aging beautifully. And I hope he continues the process for another 90 or 100 years. And then he might catch up with me. Well, we thank Eunice for arranging this. We know who our friends are. Uh, for, if it wasn't for little me, Myron would still be back in New Jersey, uh, but not in Newark. By now he would be in Short Hills or Piscataway or some other fancy place, which when he was young he couldn't have moved in without a conversion and a foreskin. <laughs> so we're all happy that I and Deuce and Eunice seduced uh, him into moving to Cleveland. It all started when he and I met in the Army 45 years ago, 45 years. Mike had a 28-inch waist, a gorgeous <laughs> head of curly hair uh, that was his very own, and a brand new name, uh, which didn't stop me from writing my first musical tribute to him, which went something like this. Oh, Mandelstein, my Mandelstein, no names may come and names may go. I much prefer Mike Mandelstein to any name I know. Uh, oh, by the way, I, I read someplace that Irving Berlin stopped writing new songs when he was about 65 years old, so I hope that you won't mind if, like Berlin, my musical renditions this evening consist of sort of working the catalog. Uh, Mike's, Mike's career as, as, as an architect uh, has now reached, as we all know, <laughs> legendary proportions. Uh, but it wasn't always that way. After about 2,000 family rooms, he turned to bigger things like two-car garages, master closets, <laughs> and unfinished second floors. But uh, his career really took off in 1964 when he teamed up with Jack Bielowski in a relationship that persists to this day. And would you believe that in all those years, there has never been a crossword between them. Uh, yes, of course, that's not surprising because they stopped talking to each other years ago. <laughs> but I do remember uh, when they moved into their offices in Shaker Square, upstairs of an Italian restaurant at the time, where Myron could thereby enjoy his two favorite activities uh, to the following tune. I above the antipasto close to shaker square there's a big ball-headed basso moved his office there past the blueprint past the meat sauce past the t-square john as jack and mike and carminati are drafting parmesan <laughs> disco, and the building is much more beautiful, thanks to Jack Bielowski, Jr. <laughs> 25 years later, on an occasion like this, uh, I wrote a little birthday ditty to Mike, uh, with a bit of help from Jerry Herman. At that time, it was merely funny and not very accurate. Now, alas, it reads more like a bill from Mount Sinai Hospital, and it goes like this. Hello, Myron. Yes, hello, Myron. It's so nice to have you aging, just like me. You're looking old, Myron. Don't catch cold, Myron. Or you'll get gout, arthritis, gas, and water on the knee. Don't let your hopes soften. 
Though you'll soften much more often, <laughs> just pretend your end is what it used to be. Watch your hips, fella. Stiffen that upper lip, fella. Sixty again, you'll never, ever see. All right, now for those of you, you didn't have to applaud. Sorry. <laughs> All right, for those of you who are getting a little fidgety at this point, don't worry, we're moving toward the end of the show, so let's wrap it up now with a little audience participation. I sing the first chorus, and then we all repeat it, all of us together. Okay? You ready? Here we go. Three cheers for Myron. It's Myron's birthday, you know. Three cheers for Myron. He is the star of the show. Sing out for Myron. Sing out a song for today. Now's the time to say to Myron, Happy Big Birthday. One more time. Okay. Three cheers for Myron. It's Myron's birthday, you know. Three cheers for Myron. He is the star of the show. Sing out for Myron. Sing out a song for today. Now's the time to say to Myron, Happy Big Birthday. Happy Birthday. side to everything. Now you just heard Jordan talk. And the good side is that now you don't have to pay five dollars a, a head to go to the Jewish News show to hear him talk next week. You're sold out, Myron. You're sold out. That's what I understand. But you can save the money. I'm, I'm really very pleased and delighted that you're all here. And uh, I, I was told that I have to act humble, so I'll be quiet. <laughs> got the vocabulary of Webster's Dictionary, and he's got a memory like an elephant. I said, that's the bird I want. How much is he? He says, $10,000. He said, you've got to be out of your mind. He said, I'm not going to spend $10,000 for a bird. He said, well, he said, I'll tell you, this bird met with a, a very terrible accident. He had both his legs cut off, so I'm willing to sacrifice him for $1,000. He said, what kind of ass do you think I am? I'm going to spend $1,000 for a bird that's going to lay in the bottom of the cage, look at the ceiling. How's he going to spy on my wife? He said, this bird is so smart that after the trauma of the accident, he called me over at the cage, and he asked me to pick him up and put him on the perch. And when I put him up there, he took his little pecker, and he wrapped it around the wooden nodule, and he keeps his balance that way. The guy said, come on. He said, you've got to be out of your mind. He said, no, no, that's a good. Come over to the cage. Go over. They shake the cage. And they wrap. This bird's got perfect balance and perfect equilibrium. So he questions the bird, and the bird recites the Constitution of the United States, names all the presidents. And it, it was just fantastic. So he says, I'll, I'll take him. So he takes him, he brings him home, he puts him in the living room, goes to bed that night, and he gets up the next morning, he walks over to the cage, he says, listen, Bert, I'm going to be out of town for about three days, I want you to watch everything that this my wife does. Bert says, okay, boss. So he leaves, and three days later, he comes back, and he walks in the house, and no sooner does he get in the house, the bird is about ready to jump out of his skin. He goes, boss, boss, come here. So he walks over, he says, what happened? He said, well, he says, it wasn't 15 minutes after you left. He said, then the doorbell rang, and he said, this Hans, she went to the door, and she opened the door, and this handsome-looking young man came in, built like a Greek god, and he grabbed her, and he started kissing her and hugging her, and he grabbed her by the ass, and he threw her on the couch, and he unbuttoned her blouse, and her big boots fell out, and he started playing with those, and the guy said, yeah, man, what happened? He says, I don't know, I got an erection, I fell off the horse. <laughs> 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 